All right, so we're out here at the worst case scenario survival school. We're out here with Randy Worst, Randy Rawhide Worst. And Randy's the real deal. He's one of four guys that actually built the classified survival manual for SOCOM. And he's gonna show us how to layer your survival gear all the way from your vehicle, all the way down to what you would actually carry on your own, uh, on your own person. So Randy, why don't you show us what you got? All right, inside the vehicle is survival gear that that you must keep inside your vehicle. This, when you lay it out, it's going to be pretty impressive how much gear I have here. Uh, before I came in the military, just real fast, I did eight, eight years as a fireman, four years crash rescue, and then I was a deputy sheriff and I was on a SWAT team. Then I came into the military and came into special forces. When I combined all that training together, what I figured out was 90% of all your emergency situations will be based around your vehicle whether you wreck or you come across another wreck. So you start with equipment that you're gonna have in your vehicle to deal with that. On the other side and the inside, when I lay it out, before I pull all this out, you're gonna see what's in the inside of your vehicle. Basically it goes like this. I'm not gonna tear everything apart. All your um, medical gear has to be in the inside. Your food or water has to be in the inside. Your signaling communication gear has to be in the inside of the vehicle with you and gear to keep you warm like blankets, uh, sleeping bags, uh, heavy coats, you'll see a reflective coat in there. That equipment, whatever vehicle you have, has to be in the inside so if you're trapped and you can't get out, you have access to it. The rest of this means I'm physically able or Carl or Mike behind you can get to it and do other work with it. But the, the, the other gear that you're, you'll see that we're gonna pull the tailgate down, that stays inside your vehicle. The rest we'll pull out can come from a locked toolbox like this. All right, Randy, so this is all the stuff we just pulled out from behind the seats. Now, a lot of gear, but this could, if you pieced it out, it would fit under the seats and around the seats of just about any vehicle. It, yeah, it, it is quite a bit, but there's a reason for it. Um, real quickly, I'm not going to tear this stuff apart for you guys. This is complete trauma stuff. Everything for trauma. Maximum wounds, compound fractures, all that. And this bag that you have over here, uh, what you have, there's my wool blanket. There's a signaling device here that's on my bag, so if I had to leave my bag and turn it on and mark it. Uh, your red thing, that's a Bic lighter. There's a flashlight. That's a, a Swiss seat rope that I can make out of that, right? And there's carabiners there. Inside is uh, food and water and the, um, the little gas stoves in which to cook it. So it, in an emergency, and rather than me trying to build a fire, I immediately can have something. I uh, picked that technique up because my wife was one of them that was stuck on Interstate 65, and she got out of there. But instead of trying to gather wood and build a fire, if I would have had mm. something ready for it. So that's what's in the inside. Yeah. There's my food, my water, more medical gear. Now, this is, we're trying to be found, so I, I have this reflective vest. And I, what you want to do with your emergency clothes is have it larger than what you wear. A smaller person can always get into a larger clothes, but a larger person can't always get into smaller clothes. So make them extra big just in case. Okay. And you'll see that with the uh, bib overalls, those uh, insulated. The only thing I, oh, your bottle. Let me go that always have, uh, there's collapsible uh, water bottles I wanted to get and I didn't get them in, in time. I like them a lot. They collapse, take top off, they collapse down about this big. Mm -hmm. But if you need to heat things up, always gotta have stainless steel, not aluminum. You don't have any of that gas coming yeah. off. Stainless steel bottles. This doesn't look like much, but this is one of those thermopads, especially if you're injured or hurt. It'll help retain body heat, and you can put mm -hmm. somebody on it or yourself. That's the, that's the inside. And when you're hunting, it helps out there. Now here, Carl and I are both retired out of a fifth group. We all both have around 25 years. So there's important gear in here based off necessity and because of our injuries we get from just being retired from special forces. Always have leather gloves. They're here in my pockets. They're, another set is here. Anytime you need to work on doing stuff, you need to protect your hands and your feet. The rule of thumb is if you damage your feet or your hands, approximately, it's 
no guarantee. I mean, it's not precise. It's around 50% of your capabilities are gone. Leather, pure leather, uh, protect your hands better than mm -hmm. anything else. You can have other gloves to keep you warm, but you need full leather gloves. Carl and I, because we did our whole career in Halo, don't have any knees left. That when you see my hunting pack, no matter what I have, I put my knee pads yeah. in there. Got mine on. Yeah, right he's now. got his. <laughs> I don't have pants like that. Always they, they go in there, and because of back injuries of taking parachutes and driving them in the ground, this is a support for the back. Especially because when we're talking about a vehicle in emergency situations, we may will more likely be working with trying to rescue somebody else. So we need to take care of ourselves so we're not being injured ourselves.